Choma, founder of Choosing Nursing. So today we're going to do a practice question to help you to increase your critical thinking skills. So, um, so if you're ready, go ahead and grab a pen, pencil, and paper, and we're going to help go ahead and get started with doing these practice questions, all right? Or this practice question today. So here's what the question says, okay? The question says that LPN informs the clinic nurse that the client diagnosed with atrial fibrillation has an INR of 4.5. Which intervention should the nurse implement? One, tell the LPN to notify the clinic healthcare provider. Two, instruct the, client, so instruct the LPN to assess the client for abnormal bleeding. Three, obtain a stat electrocardiogram on the client. Four, take no action because this INR is within the normal range. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at this question. If you need to, you can simply just stop the video and then um, to think about the answer and then, you know, restart the video to watch what the answer is. So one of the biggest things that you have to know when it comes to um, lab values, or I should say, yeah, when it comes to lab values, when it comes to medications, um, is there are specific parameters. Uh, there are specific things that you need to monitor for certain types of medications before you can safely give it, right? Because that's all part of medication administration is being able to uh, understand the potency of the drug, but then also understand, you know, what do, what do I need to look out for before I can give whatever this is. So it says that the patient has atrial fibrillation and atrial fibrillation is a heart rhythm, a, a chronic problem in this situation. And their INR levels is 4.5. So you need to know immediately is that a normal range for INR levels? Which intervention should the nurse implement? So the INR 4.5 is actually very elevated. It's pretty high. Um, so that's abnormal. So the first one is saying, do I tell the, the um, uh, pretty much the physician? Number two, do we tell the LPN to go check for abnormal bleeding, which the patient very well may have abnormal bleeding uh, because of that level being that high? Uh, number three, do we go ahead and grab that STAT EKG so that we can see if, if this is affecting their rhythm? And number four, you know what? We don't need to do anything because it's all within normal range. So here's one of the biggest things is knowing what you can and cannot do, right? Knowing what what has to now be... Um, uh, moved up the chain of command. So if we kind of look at it backwards, starting with number four, well, number four is out because it's not normal range. Number three, getting a, a stat EKG is not, does not warrant, I'm sorry, an INR of 4.5 does not warrant getting a stat EKG. Okay? So normally, in fact, if anything, you get a stat EKG if their troponin levels are elevated, but not if their iron level is elevated. And then number two, which says, we'll tell them to check the client for abnormal bleeding, uh, which is a, which could be a very important assessment to do as well. But in this situation, because the level is as high as it is, it's a greater of a priority to let the physician know. Okay, for the for, because another reason why too is that it's it's saying. LPN, right? LPNs, based on the NCUS exam, right? Based on exams, are not supposed to assess anyways, right? If the question had said RN, then maybe this could have been tell the RN to assess for abnormal bleeding. But because it's an LPN, LPNs are technically not supposed to assess. So the, the correct answer would be to tell the LPN to notify the healthcare provider, all right? Now, here's one of the things I'm gonna tell you as well when it comes to questions like this, where it talks about LPN or CNA or RN, you have to know the different roles, um, you know, for each of, for each type of personnel, right? For each type of healthcare provider, you gotta know their roles. 
And one of the things for many people is that you know what they can do, but you're not aware of what they cannot do, right? So you, so when it comes to knowing the scope of practice, you have to understand, okay, what, what are all the things that the LPN can do and what are the things the LPN cannot do? Same thing with the CNA or the UAP. What are all the things that, this, that the UAP can do and what are the things that they cannot do, right? And you have to have a clear differentiation between the two. So in this, in this situation, with this question, uh, like I mentioned, LPNs, they cannot assess, right? So if you know that fact, then it makes the answer obvious. And that's really honestly when it comes down to how well you understand and know the content. So because a lot of people, you're trying to pass or you're trying to understand questions by, by just critical thinking only, which is important, but it's not the whole picture though. You have to understand the content. You have to know the right pieces of the content and be aware of enough content in order to really be successful. If it has been, you know, a number of years since you have taken your exam, since you graduated from school, uh, your biggest priority is not questions, right? Your biggest priority is content. And also uh, understand the content based on the standards of nursing for today, right? Because however it was when you were in school, whenever you took, whenever you passed, whenever you graduated, it's not going to necessarily be the same for today. And if you're an international graduate, you really got to know, okay, what's different from how I learned about nursing then versus how I learned about it, uh, how it is here in the United States, right? Because there's certain types of responsibilities that we do here that you may not do in the school that you were taught in your home country. This is the beginning towards really being successful when it comes to content. If you need help in this, I wanna encourage you to sign up today for my four day content review class, all right? This is a live online class that we're gonna be having and it's coming up very soon actually. And I want you to register, I want you to get started uh, because the class is really gonna help you to better understand uh, content, right? And to know how to organize the content in a way where it's easy to retain, easy to understand, easy to grasp, easy for you to really learn the material, all right? We've had so many people who have passed and who have been successful that were in the same situation as you, struggle to pass, graduated years ago, whatever situation may be, maybe trying to take your ATI exam, maybe trying to pass your HESI exam, you struggle to pass, this class is for you, all right? So go to the link below this video and get started. Visit our website to register for the class. I'll be teaching it. I'm excited to see you there. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact us, email us. You can go to the website to contact us as well. Uh, so we can answer your questions, all right? Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you the next time.